Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be using Crackle Glaze. Both the Polyvine Crackle Glaze and the Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish and the napkin called Cantori comes from ninniesnapkins.com. I'll link them down below. Now I'm going to do this on 4x4 four four wood coasters. I bought these from Amazon, I've sanded them, and I've given them a coat of gesso. And here is the Polyvine Crackle Glaze. I've used different crackle mediums from different companies, and I've never had a whole lot of success. So I'm really anxious to try out the Polyvine version. So what you need, basically need to do is paint a coat of acrylic paint on whatever surface you're working on. Now I said I'm working on coasters. This could be on an art journal page. This could be on a 4x4 four four, um, canvas. That doesn't matter. You can still do the exact same thing on a different substrate. Here I'm using, I believe it's burnt umber, and I'm giving a coat of burnt umber. Now you're going to have to pick two colors of acrylic paint, one darker, one lighter, so that the one that I'm putting on now is going to be in the cracks. And because I am going to decoupage a napkin on, I want a lighter color later. But you could put the lighter color here and the darker color second where the cracks would be light. So I'm giving this a coat, as I said, burnt umber, and I'm using uh, Liquitex Basics paint. Just giving it a good coat throughout. And I'm choosing brown because I thought that would be a good contrasting color. This is the napkin called Cantor Cantori. And there's a lot of blue in it. So I thought, you know what? I'm also going to do, I'm going to do a couple of them in blue just to see what I like. I typically am not such a neutral person. I like my blues and colors. Now, it's a smart idea to edge right now before you paint the front of the surface. It's just easier, you get less paint on your hands. That would be the most streamlined way of doing it. So I'm just using a makeup sponge and this is Prussian blue. It's my darkest blue. So once I paint the edges, I am going to apply a coat of the Prussian Blue to the top surface. The Polyvine Varnishes and Mediums, there, there's a whole line available at Ninny's Napkins and you can check that out at the link in the description box. Ninny's Napkins also has a YouTube channel where she does shows some of the new products as well as um, some demos of some of those products as well. Kind of a how-to thing. So. Go and check her out. Because this is only going to show through the cracks, don't worry if it's not perfectly smooth or even because that's not going to show. So once you have the first coat of paint on there, whatever color you've chosen, 
you want to let this completely dry and you can use the heat tool to do that. I just set it aside and again this is the Cantori Dapkin. I've taken off the excess two plies and I'm using my window template to see what it would look like as a coaster. I just cut it the size of the coaster and I'm going to use the bird but I don't want the leaves part of this so I'm just going to cut this into quarters. Now this is a five by five inch napkin, so it's a small one. And you'll notice that you have two birds facing one way and two birds facing the other way. And I love napkins that have that versatility. That just gives you a lot of options when you're um, using them in art journal pages. And it gives you variation. Two of my coasters are going to face one way, two of them are going to face the other way. And there we have what would be beautiful. I've loved this napkin before. I definitely had ideas for use for it. Now, I don't want the leaves on this. And because there's going to be crackle, and that is going to give a design, a pattern, I just want to simplify the upper part of this napkin. So I'm just using a liner brush and some water, and I am water cutting the excess out. There's a very slight... Um, colorization to the background. Now right there, did you see I had too much water on my brush? So if that happens, dry it or let it dry and then reapply the water to water cut it instead of trying to rip it because in all likelihood you're going to rip it. It's going to fall apart a little more than what you want. So just take a minute and get it to dry. I think right here I switch my liner brush. That one somehow wasn't doing it for me. And this one just made it so much easier. So if you're struggling with one liner brush, try a different one and maybe you'll it'll see the difference. So that those leaves part, I'm just going to save them. They're going to be a collage item that's going to show up on another page. I keep all of these in an envelope and then I can just use them on a masterboard or collage on or start a background. I'm even getting rid of this little part inside. Because you're adding the crackle pattern, you don't want, in my mind, an all over napkin pattern because you want that element, the crackle element, to shine. And I'm just positioning it, testing it out on, on a coaster. This is just a, a fifth coaster. The other ones are still drying. So I'm just going to continue water cutting all four of these birds. And we'll be back for the next step. So my paint has dried and now the second step is to apply a coat of the Polyvine Crackle Medium. I'm using a bit of a wider brush, a flat brush here, and I'm just giving it one coat going down. There is very little smell. For those of you like me that are sensitive to smells, there was nothing that I really picked up on or that bothered me in any way and I'm just giving this one good coat 
and then this layer needs to dry. Now I know in Nini's video she talked about that you could use a heat tool. I just kept the heat tool a fair distance away. I don't want to um, have this bubble in any way because that would really just detract from the crackle effect that we are going for. And now this needs to completely dry. So paint, crackle. Now keep your eye on which direction you put the crackle on because the next layer of paint, you're supposed to do it the opposite direction. So here I've gone up and down. The paint, the next paint, I should go left to right. And you're going opposite. You'll get a better effect. And I'm my second color is going to be this unbleached titanium. And you can see it did lose its shine once it's dried. So I'm using the unbleached titanium from Liquitex Basics. And because that's a medium body, I did add a little bit of water to it. And I'm using that brush. Now you do want to try to avoid overlapping or painting over anything that you've already painted. Just one and done. So I'm really loading up my brush with a lot of paint and making it really juicy. And I'm going right across and try not to do what I just did there where you're retouching anything. Now you can see even before I was able to move to the next one, the crackles have started. And oh, I'm so excited. Now, I believe that one, I did not go in the opposite direction of the crackle medium with the paint. And you're going to see the difference and the reason why you need to pay attention to that. Okay, don't touch it. My suggestion again, get your brush really loaded and use a big brush to cover large areas. And if it's medium bodied or heavy body paint, thin it down just that smidge. And look at those crackles appearing. I know it's not exactly exciting watching paint dry, but watching the crackles appear now that is exciting. Like I said, I've tried lots of different crackle mediums and this one, ah, I was very, very happy with. And you can see all those crackles. And this is in real time. This is not sped up at this point in the video. So now I'm mixing more paint because I want to make sure that it's really goopy and soupy and my brush is really loaded. I'm trying to see which way I've painted it because I've noticed on my blue ones uh, one did not work as well as the other. The one thing with crackled mediums it's a little bit unpredictable. You do it, you cross your fingers and hope that it, it it all works out and gives you something that you like. And now we just watch the crackle. So this has now completely dried and look at the loveliness of the crackle. There's some areas where it's there's not as much crackle. Maybe I had extra thin, thick paint like right there. Three of these, I obviously went the opposite direction with the paint, the second paint color. 
and the one in the top right hand corner I didn't and I didn't get the crackles going both ways very much. So now I'm just positioning my napkin because I'm going to decoupage the napkin down on top of the crackle. And yes, the crackle is going to show through the napkin. And because it's, you know, square, I have some options about which orientation I want to put it. If there's an area that I isn't as favorable, I can make sure that it's not in the top half where it's going to become most visible. So once I'm sure where I'm going to put it, I'm using my fluid matte medium, putting some under, and then I'm using a little bit of saran wrap to smooth it on. And once everything's in place, I'm going to put another coat of matte medium on top. Of course, being very gentle, realizing that napkins become very fragile when wet. Don't worry about the parts that are overlapping. I'm going to show you what we do with those in a minute. Saran wrap to make it lie flat. And if you look close enough, you can see that the, the crackles are showing through the bird. Looks like it's just adding to the feathers and we're going to tweak that as well. This is the one, the coaster that I did not go in the opposite direction with the paint, the second color of paint. And so there's just not as much variation or, or not as much, it's not as interesting crackle. The crackle isn't as interesting as on the other ones. The crackle does give it an aged look. It's a different kind of look. I think now that I've found a crackle medium that works very reliably, I will have to experiment more with it and find out when it's best to use crackle, how to use that to really enhance a project. There you can see the crackles come through the napkin. So once again, I'm going to give this a dry. Now here's how I'm getting rid of the excess. I have these sanding blocks. You can buy them from Amazon in bulk with the Dollar Tree. I use them for sanding the coasters to begin with and they're perfect for getting off that excess napkin. So now I'm going to just tweak the colors and I'm using my Inktense blocks. I just activate it with a little bit of water and I'm just matching the colors to the colors that are already there. The intense blocks are ink. They are permanent when they're dry, so they're not going to reactivate when I give this a varnish coat at the end. And I'm using the uh, yellows, the blues, the greens, just matching what is there, but enhancing the colors. Now, part of the reason I want to enhance the colors is that with the crackle coming through, that competes with my focal image and I want that bird on the fence to stand out a little bit more. So I'm not changing it, I'm not even necessarily over painting it, I'm giving it a wash of translucent color. When I'm done, I'm doing this with each of the coasters, Every one is just going to be that little bit different. I'm not even trying to make it exactly the same from one to the other. I do add a little bit of the titan unbleached titanium for the white part of the bird's head and then part of the poppy pods, I think they are, seed pods, 
that are there and a little bit of highlights uh, both on the bird and on the fence. But that is the only acrylic color that I've used. Here I'm just adding more. I'm using the blue that's on the bird and the yellow that's on the bird. I'm also incorporating that into the fence. And when you've used all the same colors in the different parts, they really work well together. And I'm just going back and forth. I'm adding more color. I'm adding a little bit of that unbleached titanium for highlights. And I use the colors. I've swatched out all my ink tense blocks, so it's really easy to match with the colors that I have. And I'm blending colors. Just adding yellow to the seed pods here. Now I'm using black ink tents and I'm just making a pool of it. And I'm going to rather sketchily outline the bird, the pods, the fence. Just like I would with a charcoal pencil, but I don't want to use charcoal or Sabilo all pencil here because those will reactivate when I go to varnish this. And if it was an art journal page, I don't varnish it, I would be using charcoal. But because this is going to be a coaster uh, or a fridge magnet, I will absolutely be varnishing it. So I don't want to put anything that's going to smudge or reactivate. So I'm just getting very sketchy here, adding that little bit of detail, making that focal image stand out. Now, if you wanted to use charcoal, what you would have to do is spray it with a workable fixative from Krylon, for instance and let that dry before you applied the varnish. There's always a workaround, but I'm loving how this is looking. As I said, it was a bit of an experiment. I haven't used Crackle a lot, not effectively. Um, It's a different kind of background. It's a different feeling to it, but I really am loving how it's turned out. What do you think of the crackle? What crackle medium do you use? Just adding a little bit of the unbleached titanium on the edges there. Now here, I apologize, it's mostly off camera, but I left it in because I am edging all the coasters with black acrylic paint on a makeup sponge. This is framing the, um, the coaster. And I'm using black now because my plan is to put a word on each one in black and I want it all to tie together. And just a reminder, you can be doing this on a 4x4 art journal page. I'm using my wooden stamps with black acrylic paint. I've got the black acrylic paint spread out on my glass mat there. And I'm stamping into it and just stamping the letters one by one on top. And I have joy, hope, peace, and love. 
and there's the paint off to the side that I'm stamping into and then I just press it down because everything is acrylic paint and is permanent if it somehow misstamps I can go in wipe it off and re-stamp and you can't really do that with archival ink which is why I love stamping with acrylic paint and then I make sure I wipe off I've got a baby wipe in my hand and I wipe off any of the acrylic paint that's on the stamp afterwards you don't want to wreck your stamps loving how this all came together now I'm going to splatter it with a little bit of gold because well gotta have bling and there they are now on the backs what I would typically do would give a coat of black paint or actually I prefer using black gesso on the background if you're making them in coasters you can buy uh, felt that fits on there or cork that's pre-cut and if I'm making coasters I'm going to use this heavy-duty wood varnish from polyvine because it will work if you're putting a hot element on it if I wanted to turn them into fridge magnets I could use just the four squares that I got at Dollar Tree or you can buy fridge magnets and then I would use polycrylic varnish from Minwax because I don't need it to be heat resistant. Thank you so much for joining me. As I said earlier, let me know if you've used a crackle medium and which one you've used. Until next time, go get creative.